So in this video, we're going to talk about the Bassmaster Elites. We're going to talk about Major League Fishing in the BPT Stage 2, and also who is on that cut line of being kicked out of the Bass Pro Tour. So if you like this kind of style of vlog and lure reviews and all the other things that I put on the channel, please hit that like and subscribe button and become part of the team and family. I really do appreciate it. What a great weekend for bass fishing fans. They had Major League Fishing, Bass Pro Tour Stage 2 on Santee Cooper, and then the first event for the Bass Masters on Toledo Bend. And it didn't disappoint in any stage. And the Elite Field showed out. Some of the new rookies turned up, showed up, and showed the Elite Field how great they are. Anglers coming back, such as Jordan Lee, who I think probably is going to win Angler of the Year, came out and got a ninth place finish. And it was just a great event on Toledo Bend with big fish, lots of fish, and some giant names in the industry being in that top 10. But of course, it can't be 100% perfect. You're going to hear a lot of people complain about forward-facing sonar. It was dominant. It was the most dominant thing that happened this weekend. While some anglers did fish shallow, like Jason Christie and John Cox and other anglers, the anglers who won were all forward-facing sonar dominating anglers. They were, that was what they used almost 99% of the time. And it became very boring to watch again. Not as boring as going online and watching Bassmaster.com and watching the live mix where there's zero commentary for the first couple days. Give the reins to Davey Height. Let him do the commentary on those first, second, third days of the live mix where all you do is watch someone not talk about, well, an angler, not talk about what he's doing and just stare down at his screen, not explaining what he's doing. It was awful. It is shit bass fishing television. Bassmasters should be completely embarrassed by the live feed or the live mix that they put on Bassmaster.com. Not all of us get FS1. Not even sure a lot of people watch FS1 because I know bowling beats Bassmasters majority of the weekends that bowling is going against Bassmasters in terms of ratings. But if you were watching on Bassmaster or on YouTube, there was just nothing going on. There was no talking at all. And it was the single worst experience to watching bass fishing in my life and I hated it. I found myself immediately going to Major League Fishing because I knew that JT and the other guys would at least be talking and bass needs to tell the anglers when they're live that they need to be part of the, the conversation. Instead of staring down at your stupid video screen, tell us what's going on, what you're seeing, what you're doing. Don't just be quiet because it's horrible, horrible internet bass fishing tournament watching. And on day one, we saw Kaya Fujita have the lead with anglers like Ben Milliken, Pat Schlapper, and other guys right there in the mix. Day two was just another one. Pat Schlapper had a great day two, just catching big fish after big fish all on live scope and took the lead. Day three, it was back and forth. Schlapper again on day three had the lead, but Kaya Fujita came back and won and got that hundred pound mark for one of the very few times that it's actually happened. He's on the Bassmaster hundred pound club for four Four days and a great great win for him because the big fish showed up the big fish were out there the whole time for on um, Toledo Bend it was a great tournament it was a great time to go to that place to fish too so my hats are off to the Bassmaster group for putting out a great tournament other than the live mix is just worthless I, I wouldn't even put it on the internet because it's not worth watching but that's just me but having Kaya Fuji to win was unbelievable we had other anglers like Pat Schlapper Robert Gee who's a rookie, did unbelievable. Ben Milliken, Patrick Walters coming in second place. I'm going to say it right now. Patrick Walters and Jordan Lee are my two guys I think are on that cusp of going to the next level. They're already at the next level, but going to that KVD Wheeler level. I think both of them have it. I think that's the two guys I would be putting my money on to win Angler of the Year. And, and honestly, any place that it's going to be forward-facing sonar dominant, those two guys are going to be in the mix to win. They are fantastic forward-facing sonar anglers. So so congratulations to Kaya Fujita, and if I'm saying his wrong, name wrong, I apologize. I'm going to say a lot of names wrong, but congratulations to him because he's been, for his second year, he is absolutely fantastic angler. Let's get into the BPT Major League Fishing at Santee Cooper, which I have way more notes than the Bassmaster Elites. Of course, day one wasn't broadcast for people to watch, and I think people thought that after all the complaining after the stage one, that maybe MLF would go back and, and have the first day tournament. They're not. And... 
anglers like uh, J- James Citywide Watson having a good first day and having the hashtag FBD, which I just can't even imagine. Uh, but it's all right. You're probably not going to make the, the cut anyway. You might as well swear and do anything you want. I just don't agree with it. But anglers like James Citywide threw a real, you know, went on Facebook and told how bad it is, even though it could have said that in the first first week. When he, when he isn't catching him, he doesn't say anything. When he is catching him, then it's a, it's a problem. A little hypocritical, but... Anyway, let's make it about you, James. Uh, but I don't, I don't agree with it. But of course, anglers were still uh, anglers and fans were unhappy with not having day one. But we need to just get over it. It's a way to save a little bit of money, and I, they, if they have to do it, they have to do it. We just have to grow some balls and and be and just admit defeat here. We have to admit defeat on forward facing sonar too, because this was another place where if you were you weren't for, forward facing sonar video game fishing, you probably weren't winning. Now James did citywide did do well pitching and flipping and throwing that spinner bait. He did very well, but the guys who were in that top five were in the top five because they were forward facing sonar dominant. Jacob Wheeler ended up winning his seventh tournament on BPT over six years, which is just just unbelievable. And I know I. I take, I take a little bit of beating because I say Jacob Wheeler is the best angler on the planet. I do believe Jacob Wheeler is the best angler on the planet. You can put him on the leads and he will win. He will, You can put him on NPFL and he would absolutely win every tournament. He is absolutely unbelievable and congratulations to him and his crush city lures and baits that he just seems to be doing really well with but day one we had anglers such as matt becker and dylan hayes and alton jones jr and dustin connell a whole bunch of anglers on day 1a in that group it was they really dominated and did very well moving themselves into the knockout round in group b jacob wheeler dean rojas and dean needed the points that's the key. We'll get to the points here in a second. But Brett Ayler, Casey Ash, and Nick LeBrun, Zach Burge, Justin Lucas, Marshall Robinson, Fred Rubanis, and Spencer Sheffield. Those guys all did very well in group day 1B. On day 2, my thoughts were, can we get Dylan Hayes to just do commentary or whatever he wants all day? If you missed day 2, group A, Dylan Hayes was on there telling what he was doing and how he was fishing. He was so eloquent in how he speaks that it was awesome to listen to and watch. Now, day two, they do have the commentators come back and live, but Dylan made that whole day for me. It was unbelievable to listen. I learned so much, and he is great at talking to the camera, something that Bassmasters need to teach all of their anglers what to do and how to do it. And day two, group B, my only flaw in that is the guys get ahead so much and that they get to a certain level where they're going to make, they know they're going to make the knockout round, and they stop fishing. And I think that is boring for fans. Jacob Wheeler did it and other anglers did it because they knew they had such a score tracker advantage or or weight advantage to the guys that were behind them that they just stopped fishing. And I understand stopping fishing to find more fish for your knockout rounds or your championship round. But as a fan, the problem with that is, is that if they stop fishing and they have a camera person on the boat, then there's a changeover. And what they do is they're not really doing anything. For example, I saw and watched one angler sit there for 10 or 12 minutes and only made three casts because he was so video game fishing and that's what I'm going to call scoping from now on video game fishing he was so you know structured on looking down that he only made three casts and that is boring just as boring as if an angler decides he's going to quit fishing for the day and look for spots while I understand it I don't agree with it but maybe something needs to happen where there's some extra points or money or something that happens so that anglers continue to fish instead of quitting. And lastly, the knockout round and the final round, there were a couple things that were really evident and dominant in these in this tournament. The chatterbait was crucial for anglers. They the most of the anglers were using a chatterbait or a spinnerbait or something to get the reaction strike. And it was it was fun to watch. Next, there were a bunch of anglers that were in the knockout round that really needed to have a good tournament to get themselves the points so that they continue into 2025. Anglers like Citywide Watson, Marty Robinson, D. Rojas, and Casey Ashley, who I think is still way above the cut line but getting those points is crucial and of course the holding back Justin Lucas got ahead and then started holding back because he knew he made it into the, the final round now it didn't help him in the final round in the championship round because I think he came in 10th but overall he stopped fishing and it was one of those another one of those things I just don't I don't want him to hold back I want to see him catch fish all the time and major league fishing has one thing over bass that's really good is because they have anglers catching fish all the time they're constantly flipping from one to the other so you're constantly getting a little bit of action every few minutes whereas the bass 
Masters, who's on the live mix, have one angler fishing for an hour and a half, not talking to the camera or telling us what's going, and then didn't catch anything. And it was horrible. It was horrible fish, horrible for a fan, horrible for a new person to watch too, because you didn't learn anything and you just became frustrated. And I wish Bassmaster would just take it offline or give the reins to somebody else. But I said that late, earlier. But congratulations to Jacob Wheeler and Dean Rojas for second place and Wiggins, Park, Becker, Hayes, Ashley, Lefebvre, uh, Floyd, Watson, and Lucas for getting that top 10 and getting the points that they need. But Jacob Wheeler, you're just a stud, dude. And last is a major league fishing bass pro. Guys on the bubble of not qualifying for 2025. First things first, I have to say, I have not taken out the worst year of an angler because technically the 2025 season could be their worst year in terms of points. And I'm going by the cumulative angler of the year points and the divided by the years to get a average. And that average is where I'm guiding, get, gathering information on who's in and who's out. New anglers that are starting off slow are really kind of in trouble and they're in jeopardy already, which is kind of scary. Kobe Schrumpf, Jason Vance, Gray Buck, Keith Carson, Marshall Robinson, Joshua Weaver. There's a bunch of them that need to find their place and catch fish. They've started off a little slow. So those anglers are on that bottom of the barrel as is right now. But the guys who I know right now from my points, and I'll throw them up on this thing as I go. Anglers like Boyd Duckett, Cliff Crochet, Kelly Jordan, John Murray, Gary Klein, James Citywide Watson, David Walker, Britt Myers, Brenton Coulter, Matt Lee, Marty Robinson, Shin Vukai, and the new Hall of Famer Skeet Reese are in that bottom of the barrel for the angler in getting into the 2025 Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour. Those guys need to have some good points. To be honest, Boyd Duckett and Cliff Crochet and Kelly Jordan and John Murray and Gary Klein, I don't know that they can make it in, to be honest. I think they're on that 60, 60 to 65 right now. And to get three or four or 10 points every tournament isn't enough. You have to have some wins. You need to be in that 140 point range to get your points up so much now that it helps your overall average. Your average on Boyd Duckett over those years is probably close to dead last, and I'll throw up throw it up right here. But Boyd and on other anglers really need to start fishing, or they're just gonna be out, but they are owners. That's where the real question comes in. If they is, will they really kick themselves out? I don't know. I think it's gonna be controversy at the end of the year. But that's who I have in the bottom of the MLF BPT right now for cumulative points over the years. So hopefully you like this kind of content. Click that like and subscribe button. Remember, take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. We will talk very, very soon. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you. Cheers.